And as we close the chapter on Sam Bankman Fried's case and Washington now faces pressure not to allow anything like this to happen again, it leaves us asking, what does this mean for the broader crypto industry? To help answer that question is Sam Enzer, partner at Cahill Gordon Rydell Law and podcaster and crypto commentator Scott Melker, host of Wolf of All Streets. So, Sam, let me start with you. First, Sam, just your response, your reaction to the verdict. Uh, first, thanks for having me on again. It's a pleasure to be back. Um, I, I think that to me, the verdict is not surprising, but it is a confirmation that this type of behavior, fraud, will not be tolerated, whether it's on the blockchain or on Wall Street um, or anywhere else. Fraud will, not, fraud will not be tolerated. I think the, the jury clearly was receptive to the government's case, was not persuaded by Bankman Fried's testimony, and we saw that with their swift verdict. The government acted swiftly in this case charging the case very quickly after the fraud was discovered roughly a year ago. Um, and the jury, you know, met that challenge and, and quickly came back with what is clearly the right verdict. In terms of what it means for the market, that's a that's a broader question. Scott, what does this signal to you when it comes to kind of the conviction about what does this conviction signal about conviction as it comes to crypto, right? Uh, does this create more clouds or does this clear up the clouds in your mind? Potentially it clears up the clouds a bit, but I think it's important to note that this was a case of fraud that has literally nothing to do with crypto. Bernie Madoff didn't need crypto to commit fraud and uh, uh, the largest Ponzi scheme in history, and there's been frauds uh, throughout history that haven't relied on the blockchain or crypto to do it. Sam Bankman Free would have found a way to do this, whether it was with crypto or not. And I think that most people have really come to understand that nuance over time. I think that this definitely puts a bookend on this, uh, puts a close to some of the outright frauds and the contagion that we saw last year. There are still some other impending cases and potential cases that they could impact the market. But I think largely now crypto has moved on. And I think it's really important to remember that this was very much a United States focused thing. I go to conferences all around the world. I was just in Singapore a month ago and nobody's talking about FTX. Nobody's talking about SBF. It was a blip in the news cycle. He's really an American celebrity and this is an American phenomenon in a world worldwide asset. And Sam, let me get your take on that. You know, listen, this was a big case big personality, made a lot of headlines. Um, now we have a verdict. Do you see broader implications for the crypto ecosystem, the crypto industry and market? I do, and I think it'll be positive. So uh, while, while I agree that fraud is fraud and that this fraud had nothing to do with crypto, I think that the government's investigation did have to do with crypto. The government had to use the blockchain understand the technology, understand the way that assets were commingled, the relationships between customers and a crypto exchange. It was able to do that. It did it effectively. It prosecuted the case swiftly. It, it did justice. And what that means is we as a market, as market participants, should have confidence that there are cops on the street, that there is a cop on the beat that will make sure that there's market integrity and that the bad actors will be taken care of so that the, there is room for the good actors, the folks who are legitimate business people taking advantage of this transform, transformative technology to build opportunities can do that. And investors and customers should feel confident that they will have the same safety when it comes to investments in digital assets and the regulation of that space as they would in any other asset. Um, there are also lessons Sam. learned in terms Sorry. of- yeah. Well, Please. I just wanted to ask you really quickly, because obviously uh, he's now facing potentially more than 100 years in prison. Does a sentence of that magnitude match the crime in your mind? That's a very complicated question, because I think I was actually in the courtroom when when Bernard Madoff was sentenced. I was a young federal law clerk at the time, uh, and my judge had the Madoff civil case and we were close with Judge Chin, who was handling the criminal case. And I think that there are some parallels between the Madoff case and the Bankman Freed case, but there are also a lot of differences. Um, Madoff was somebody who had been an unrepentant fraudster for decades, and he was facing justice late in his life. Bankman Freed, as far as we know, this is a first time sin for him. Um, he is young, he's like 31 years old. And so I think it's a difficult question 
what do you do to impose punishment on somebody who did something very, very bad, but might be redeemable? You know, perhaps in 20 or 30 years, this is a person who could make a contribution to society and, and isn't part of in punishment, believing that we can rehabilitate people. So it's it's not a simple it's not as simple as some of the other cases we've seen like Mato. And Scott, I, I want to bring you back in, talk a little bit about Bitcoin, where we are, where you think we're headed. You know, we did see a rally there. I mean, obviously well off those record highs of 69,000, but obviously there's a lot of enthusiasm, Scott, as you will know, among crypto fans for that spot Bitcoin ETF. You think, say, uh, Scott, that you think the SEC approves those products? And if so, when do you think so? By the end of this year, early next, what do you think a timeline is? Listen, I look to the experts and ask the exact same questions. I often talk to Eric Balchunas and James Seyfert at Bloomberg on my own shows. They're the ETF experts. They say 90% chance of approval by the end of the year or January 10th, which is the last chance that the SEC effectively has to reject the ARC filing that we've seen. We've seen real moves with BlackRock getting listed on the DTCC website. Uh, Galaxy getting listed there as well. That means that they're likely starting to seed those funds. I think that the SEC has to capitulate on this after they lost to Grayscale. And I really think that this could be a face-saving measure for Gary Gensler, who's been disgraced repeatedly, repeatedly, over and over and over again in court, just continues to lose to the judicial system. The SEC can now throw the bones to the crypto industry, say, here's your Bitcoin spot ETF, it's approved, and then he can go about his merry way, accusing everything else of being a security, which seems to be his mandate coming down, obviously, from, from somewhere up high. I think that this thing absolutely gets approved. I think the price action that we've seen is largely on that assumption. This is one of those rare cases where you as an individual can front run what institutions are going to do because they're going to come in once they have the ETF in a way that they can, you know, act on their fiduciary responsibility and responsibly uh, buy this asset. So, so I really think there's a great opportunity for people. We will see an ETF approved and it will be very, very beneficial for the market. And Sam, I just want to end here with you on this question. From what I've read, Sam, um, Bankman Freed is tentatively scheduled for a second trial on campaign finance early next year. Do you think that should go ahead, Sam? Would you would you press ahead with that? Or do you think, listen, we've got a verdict now. Let's move on. I think enough is enough. No need to pile on. The government has made their point. Um, as you heard, Damian Williams, my friend, former colleague and the U.S. attorney, uh, say they've got enough handcuffs for all the fraudsters in crypto. So I, I don't see a need to proceed with that trial. I think it would not be an efficient use of judicial resources to make a bunch of witnesses show up and put them through another trial, nor do I think that the government has significant appellate risk such that they would want to get other charges and other convictions proven up so that they have a backup, they don't need it. So if I was the government, I would not proceed on those and I would just move forward to sentencing. Sam Ensner and Scott Melker. Guys, thank you both for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thanks.